Dinesh Kandanchada joins me now. He is the chairman of Windfall Geotech Inc. Dinesh, welcome back. Good to see you, man. Yeah, it's great to see you too, Dinesh. You, uh, you have your, your fingers in so many pies. Tell me about Windfall Geotech. Windfall Geotech is a um, geotechnology firm. So we've spent the last 15 years in the mining sector using artificial intelligence and machine learning for digital exploration. Hmm. The biggest challenge in um, mining is limited capital, trying to find what amounts to a pot of gold in a very, uh, very large claim area. So what the card system was able to do is identify and shrink the area of exploration, thereby getting better ROI for investors, and also um, you know, allowing um, uh, junior mining companies to be able to progressively go back to market uh, without investing you know, too much upfront. Mm -hmm. So what is the essence of the technology? Is it statistical analysis? It's a combination of different factors. It's, it's, it is machine learning, so mm -hmm. anomaly detection. The way that the technology works is that it understands a known good context. So if you have, a, as Michelle, our, our CEO says, the best place to find a mine is next to a mine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so if we know we have a, a great um, uh, geological context that has found mineralization in the past, we're able to then look for a signature that would, sh in a large claim, for example, that mm -hmm. has a similar um, um, uh, mineralization pattern. Sure. And we use multiple sensor technologies in order to do that. Hmm. And so that's a very interesting application to the mining sector. So it's like artificial intelligence for mining. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Excellent. I didn't even pay you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. But you could. Uh, no, okay. So, um, so give me an example of the technology succeeding in actually finding a deposit. So we've done over 86 projects over mm -hmm. 15 years, uh, over 30 discoveries. Um, that's the great thing and what really attracted to me, me to this company um, post my involvement uh, with Patriot was the fact that I was looking for an organization that had a proven technology um, that could potentially be applied to other markets. And um, you know, there's very few things um, in AI machine learning that time and data can't solve. Mm -hmm. And majority of the players out there in the marketplace today don't have, don't A, have, are brand new, or they haven't got the historical track record of projects that um, that Windfall has, specifically mm -hmm. the Cards platform. So I was like, okay, so this is something that's proven. This is technology that has, um, you know, that has made significant discoveries over the course of the last fifteen years. What else could we use this for? Because there's a lot of really valuable things in the ground. Yeah, mineralization, of course, mm -hmm. is a big is one. But there's a lot of other stuff too. And with my background in um, in the defense and security sector. I was thinking through what are the big problems. Um, you know, we talk a lot about at Patriot about the scourge of uh, concealed weapons and the you know the pain it causes families. Well, you know, an equally large pain is the scourge of landmines, and you know we've seen a lot um, over the last few years uh, of organizations um, you know posting out about young families and children getting maimed and killed by landmines that were placed 50 years ago or 70 mm -hmm. years ago. So I saw some very um, a potential for some great social good with a proven technology and a huge market, you know, around $700 million roughly was spent last year just trying to clear the existing problem of landmines and 100 million landmines out there. So if you're really good at finding stuff in the ground and we can find gold and copper and silver and, and um, zinc, what about, and that's hundreds if not thousands of feet in the ground, what about a disk this big that's six, inch, six inches under the ground. How could we use that same algorithm to, to find those and thereby maybe make a big difference in, in mm -hmm. some people's lives? And so that's what got me thinking. So in, in spring of last year, I, um, some common friends of ours mm -hmm. uh, asked me to go and take a look at this company. I flew up to Brossard, I got to spend some time with the team there, the developers, and I saw, you know what? These guys have got something. Now it really comes down to just because you've got a great technology that doesn't create a great company. Mm -hmm. So now what we need to do is we need to put that awesome core technology and build a great company around it. So that's what we've been doing over the last six months. We've been signing contracts, getting you know as close as we can to cash flow positive, and um, and now 
as of we announced this morning, uh, we've completed our first uh, drone-based landmine detection test. Hmm. And so we are now at a place where we can identify, albeit it's a very large anti-tank mine, um, but it's the first step in right. being able to use drones and proven mine, mining surveying technologies with our CARDS algorithm to maybe deal with this very, very uh, painful problem. You bet. Okay, so you're saying that this can be used in mining, but it's also got an application for landmine detection. This is, this is How many landmines right. are there still out there? 100 million as per the last count, and it's growing by tens of thousands every year. Wow, who's spreading landmines at this point? It's pretty horrible to think, but a lot of people are. In fact, really? it's uh, it's one of those things where you think it's, well, this is a World War One problem, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Why, why do we need landmines now? But it's right. still So very obviously much in war zones like uh, Syria, probably? Syria, Yemen, Bosnia, hmm. um, uh, Northern Africa, uh, Cambodia, um, Vietnam, uh, parts of Northern India, parts of China. Mm. Like this is the 86 countries Whoa. have current contaminated zones. And um, how much is spent now globally on clearing landmines? So last year, uh, roughly $700 million US last year. Really? Um, it's estimated that the global problem is a $100 billion problem. Um, and what's preventing the, 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 you know, the mass adoption of technology is the fact that current solutions are ground-based. The analogy I use is, when we started mining, what did, what did geologists do? They went and walked, yeah, right? The yeah. claim. You look, you tried to see if you could hit a few rocks and see something, right? right? And then along came aircraft. Yeah. And you had to pay for this very expensive plane who then you know, took a survey. And then a few years ago, <gasps> drones showed up and mm -hmm. everything changed in mining. It's the exact same thing happening in, in the landmine industry t up till um, uh, like even now, there's no, drone-based solution that is commercial in the market. But drones exist. They're now economical. They, we, sure. can, we can use those surveying techniques. So we don't have to take a dog, which is currently, believe it or not, the best way to go and search for landmines is an operator with a dog sniffing for explosives. I mean, horrible, horrible. It feels like World War I stuff. Does the dog get blown up? I mean, hopefully not. Yeah, <laughs> but no like, kidding. it's not nice for the, it's not nice for the sure. operator or the, or the service animal. Hmm. So our objective is to use technology, drones, sensors that are proven in the mining context with a, you know, proven AI based algorithm to try to take a lot of the threat out of this, uh, out of this problem. And you know, we've just started down that role. Road. Sure. So this is a commercial ready technology. The, um, the components are all commercial ready. What no one has put them together. Okay. So that's where we are at the current stage in our testing is we have commercial grade drones. We have sensors that light our mag um, uh, thermal used every day in the mining sector. So we don't need to develop new sensors. We don't need to get new certification. You remember with Patriot, we had to mm -hmm. develop a whole bunch of new technology. Mm -hmm. No, this stuff is being used every day in, di in exploration hmm. to get, so that's a great advantage. It's also a great accelerator of the business plan. What's not been tested is putting these pieces together with a qualified operator to be able in, a, in Yemen or in Bosnia or in Northern Africa to be able to operate those very tight survey lines so that we can get quality data to be able to apply to the algorithm. Well, that's fantastic. All right. Um, so then how soon until this is commercially producing capital or <laughs> revenue? Rather? Revenue, yeah. So there's, you know, the story is very similar to the Patriot story. There's some pretty, you know, well-defined gates. The mm -hmm. first gate is a, um, is a validated, independently validated um, uh, field trial which is the stage we're at now. Okay, okay? so that's happening in 2020. That's, that's happening, yeah, probably before the summer. Great. Um, and, you know, with that comes partnerships with, you know, commercial grade drone manufacturers, preferably ones with existing relationships with defense contractors, mm -hmm. um, and also uh, surveying companies to help us operate the drone wear software company. Oh, right. So we need somebody to help us with that. So those partnerships are what Michelle and I are actively engaged in right now. We've be done our first test, Good news, we found something. We were able to use our combination of uh, drone plus sensor plus um, algorithm to be able to uh, to identify that this, this is viable prototype. Taking it from prototype to commercial, um, uh, commercial technology is the first step. But that's not the end, last step because you know how it works. You're gonna get in and governments are gonna go, well, prove it to me. Mm -hmm. So then paid pilots become the next step. Mm -hmm. And so we expect to be in the paid pilot arena by the end of the year, end of the calendar year. And then leveraging um, 
you know, what I hope, what I believe are great relationships that we've built through um, the development of the Patriot technology, go back to some of those channel partners and say, look, we have something new. Majority of our of the Patriot channel partners were ex-military. They've lived the experience of landmine and unexploded ordnance daily in their professional careers. So they understand how difficult it is. And I genuinely believe if we can provide a great technology with a good revenue platform, revenue share platform for them, they'll take on the take on the business. Well, sounds great, Dinesh. You've done it before, and I'm glad to see you're going to do it again. Thanks very much for joining me today. Thank you very much, James. Great to see you again. You bet.